Hi, and welcome to The Key, where we unlock all that God has for you. I'm Jen Lee, and my mission is to connect you with the God who created you for a purpose. In John 10.10, 10, it says that the thief came only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give them life, and life more abundantly. I hope you guys are having a great week. I prayed this morning and just asked the Lord what he wanted me to talk to you about. And this is what I heard. I heard one word in my spirit and the word was courage, courage. So it is a time for courage. And the Lord led me to a couple of different scriptures. Of course, the first one that popped into my mind and I have actually behind me on a little plaque back there is Joshua 1 9 which says be strong actually it says have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage do not be afraid do not be dismayed for the Lord your God goes with you wherever you go but then God actually led me into a couple of different places for today and the first part is in Second Chronicles, if I can bring you there, in 15. And actually, I'm just going to read this to you. Hang out with me for just a minute. It's only going to be about seven or eight verses, but I want to connect this to something that um, God's been working on on the inside of me. And I know, you know, when that happens, I know that it's never just me. It is never just me because there's nothing special about me. He's talking to the body of Christ right now about courage, about being strong by his strength, about conquering fear of man, fear of man, fear of what people might start saying about you when you start walking towards your calling, fear about being misunderstood, fear about being judged, or criticized or even lied about fear of what do we call them like keyboard warriors people online who say such terrible things sometimes but you know this is just this is just the very beginning of persecutions for us and we don't know what's in the near future in this country <clears throat> but I really feel that the Lord is preparing us to be strong. And while I completely believe we as believers can live in the secret place of the most high, the Lord can hide us from the enemy. I also believe that part of the, this persecution, its job is to strengthen us. So that is a way that he's going to grow us in boldness. He's going to increase our reliance on the Holy Spirit in order to be witnesses for him. So let's go to 2 Chronicles 15. The reforms of Asa. So this is a righteous king that had risen in Israel. Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest and without law. But when in their trouble, they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. And in those times, there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in. But great turmoil was on all of the inhabitants of the lands. 
So nation was destroyed by nation and city by city, for God troubled them with every adversity. Listen to verse number seven. But you be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities, which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim. And he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. So <clears throat> many of you, I hope, know about a special court case, a hearing that was held um, just day before yesterday on Wednesday of this week that has the potential to overturn Roe versus Wade. And we've been gathering people to pray about this case. They are deliberating, I believe, through today. I believe we'll make their decision by tonight, but we probably will not hear about it until midsummer. That's what we've heard anyway, is that we won't actually hear their decision for several months. But the first thing that rose up in my spirit when I read this was when I read, they took courage. He took courage. Asa took courage and removed the abominable idols from all the land. When I read the words abominable idols, I saw Planned Parenthood, because there is nothing more abominable to the Lord than the slaughter of innocent babies. I pray for clarity right now for the body of Christ, that they would wake up and see what this is. The Lord does not care about your politics. And I'm sorry if I sound angry, but there has been a righteous anger that has begun to rise up in many of us as we really see how much damage this unconstitutional law has done to this nation <clears throat> and really to the world because so many people followed suit. And we think of how really an entire generation has been wiped out because of this evil law. And so I pray right now that we would put politics aside. It doesn't matter what your parents or your grandparents taught you about Democrats or Republicans. We need to wipe it away and we need to, we need to look and see who are the people that are standing up for life. And if you call yourself a Christian, you, you are obligated. The Lord calls you, the, the Lord expects you to stand for life. And there are no reasons, there are no excuses before him for you to say, yeah, but what about this, Lord? No, there is no what about this when it's babies. There's no what about this. There's no excuses. There's no horrible thing that could happen that could excuse that murder because two wrongs don't make a right. And this message is surprising me right now because none of this was planned. But I just pray for open eyes right now in Jesus' name for your people, God. And even for the people that don't know you yet, I know, I know people that are not even Christians that are pro-life because they just understand science. I pray, Lord, for the love of the mothers and the fathers to rise up in your people today. Lord, I pray for courage, most of all, to rise up in your people today, to not be silent anymore. I heard a statistic the other day that I thought was terrifying, and it was that uh, I think about 2.8% of pastors actually speak about this topic 
from the pulpit. Only about 2.8% talk about um, what they deem to be a political argument from the pulpit, even though this is not a political topic. Yeah, the enemy has made it political. He's tried to make, to just, he covers things, okay? He covers things, he, he twists, and he deceives. Do you know something I found out that was very interesting years ago about the word wicked? So the Bible describes the enemy as wicked and people who follow him as wicked. And the word wicked, the root of it, is the same word that we use for wicker, which is a twisted wood. You twist it to make baskets. It's, it's a twisting. To be wicked is to be twisted. The enemy twists the truth in order to deceive. Do not get this topic twisted in your minds. This is black and white. This is black and white. And we will not be able to stand before the Lord someday and defend this hideous evil. There is no way. There's no way. So I want to get it right now. I want to be on the side of light. I want to be on the side of courage, not, oh, this baby is an inconvenience to me and this might mess up my life, so I will do away with it. And you know there is forgiveness in the Lord for those who have had an abortion. I always feel like I have to remember to bring that out because it, I, I have friends who have had abortions. I've had friends who came to Christ later and, you know, God wiped them clean. And now they are ministers of the gospel. And it is beautiful. And their testimony is absolutely amazing and touches so many. So there absolutely is forgiveness there. But there's no excuse to support this any longer as a believer in Christ. Because if you are, then you are one who says one thing and does another. You might read the word occasionally. You might hear the word occasionally, but you don't do the word. And the, com the Bible commands us to be doers, not hearers only. Okay, I'm going to bring you to one more scripture. Oh, Lord, I just thank you for your grace upon me today. Thank you for your grace, Lord. I pray, Father, for understanding of this message. I pray, Lord, for protection over this message, that it would not um, become twisted by the enemy, that people could hear the spirit that this message is from, Lord, and that they won't be deceived in Jesus' name. I wanted to bring you over to Ezra very quickly because he brought me to um, Ezra 10, verse 4. And this is when Ezra is realizing that he needs to, to be the one to right a wrong amongst his people and that there is forgiveness in the Lord once they take action and they right this wrong. So this scripture says, arise. This is what the Lord says, okay? It says, arise, for this matter is your responsibility. People of God, this matter is our responsibility. This matter of life. It sits upon us. It's our responsibility to stop this. To turn this over. This matter is your responsibility. We also are with you. Be of good courage and do it. Mm -hmm. Be of good courage and do it. So whatever the Lord has been speaking to you about doing, about using your voice for, about standing up for, take a courageous step today. It does take courage. It absolutely takes courage to follow the Lord. This is not, <laughs> it's not a game. 
That's not a game. There's a lot at stake. But I just pray courage over you today in the name of Jesus. And you know what I noticed for myself when the Lord was prompting me to get involved in this and speak for this, he gave me dreams. Um, it was really in about January of this year. And I knew something was coming um, with babies. And fast forward several months this summer, I meet Brad Lindworm, who's the local leader for 40 Days for Life. And we just kind of clicked spiritually and started talking about this. And he starts telling me about what his prayer has been. And before I knew it, the Lord was asking me to become the next leader of this group. And I didn't really have it on my radar. I thought it would just be, I'll just occasionally pray. <laughs> I'll just occasionally pray out in front of Planned Parenthood and that'll be it. But it's going to be a little more than that. And that's okay. And the, the goal of this group is prayer. It's prayer vigils. So it fits me. And it's something where I will be organizing those vigils, doing social media posts and things like that. Um, that is really the goal is, is just organized prayer. So um, it is up my alley, but still, you know, is taking a, some courage for me to step into it. But what I noticed was the very first day that I went out to that sidewalk and I prayed in front of that building. And I, I had felt so intimidated, you guys, for years thinking about doing this. I, I just always kind of found something else to do, you know, when I knew that some people at church were going to go do that or whatever. And um, backed off. And what I noticed was the very first day that I did that, some fear broke off of me. Fear broke off. And then each time that I go, it's like courage builds, strength builds, persecution builds you. I have never been flipped off so much in my entire life. I mean, I wasn't flipped off very often before, but, <laughs> but now, you know, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to the, the screaming curses, but you know what happens every time that that happens? Something on the inside of me, the spirit of God. Okay. It's not me, but the spirit of God rises up in me and strengthens me more for battle. And the same thing will happen for you as you step into that thing. So I bless you today. I pray courage over you in Jesus' name. I bless you guys. I pray that um, you have a wonderful month of December. I will be back um, probably next Friday. I will let you know for sure. Um, I'm going to be going to an amazing conference in Florida that weekend, and I'm very excited. It's going to be a huge blessing. And I'm going to get on and actually talk to you guys a little bit about that conference, maybe on my way there or even while I'm there, because it's funny how God put this all together. And it's, it's exciting. It's exciting to follow God, to follow where the Spirit is leading. So follow Him today. Follow Him today and be blessed. I'll see you guys next week on The Key. And we do.